morning and welcome to our live stream today. We're glad that you have joined us and we hope that this morning will be a blessing to you as you sing along with us and we share together in God's word. I want you to sing this morning with us. The word should be on your screen there as we lift up praise to our Lord. And in a little while, we're going to open up his word and we're all going to just focus in on what his Holy Spirit has to say to us today. So let's let this morning, let's lift our voices up and praise him as we sing, Yes, I Will. Choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names that nothing can stand against. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name.
Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you that you're a God who is working in our lives daily, who loves us, shows your mercies every day, and sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and rise again on the first day. Lord, we thank you for Sunday. Lord, we, we miss it when we can't all be assembled together, but we thank you that through this uh, age of media that we, we can at least participate together in spirit. And Lord, we know that that's what you ask us to do, to worship you in spirit and in truth. And so Lord, we anticipate hearing the truth from your word today. Lord, we pray for the needs of our people. Lord, each, each family that's involved in our church and in our ministries that reach out into our community. Lord, we pray you'll meet those needs, make yourself very real in the lives of each one who is touched by uh, the work we do here. And Lord, I pray most of all that Jesus Christ will be lifted up and glorified in all that we do. We pray for the revival services coming up, Lord, that you will use them to strengthen us and to help us in reaching out into this community and on into the world. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm kind of homesick for the country to which I've never been i 
Amen. Whew. I don't know. I That sounds better and better, doesn't it? Beulah Land, that place where those who know Jesus, man, we're, we're going to get to go and and all of the cares of this life will be a memory. And we'll have our final home and we'll be together with brothers and sisters from every age and every place, uh, loved ones, friends who've gone before. You know, I got to thinking when we were listening to them sing that beautifully that if the Lord waits to come back, I will be one of those <laughs> that people will say, oh, I can't wait to see, I hope they do, I can't wait to see so-and-so again. Um, but I'm so thankful for the promise of heaven. And, uh, you know, it, the, the promise of heaven, the, the assurance of looking forward to a place and a time that won't have all of this stuff is such a beautiful truth. And I hope that we embrace that this morning. I hope that we embrace the fact that if you know Jesus, that is a reality for you. And if you don't know Jesus, it can be a reality for you when you put your faith in him. And so we're so glad for that reminder this morning. Well, let's open our Bibles, if you would, to Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16. We're going to do uh, have one verse be our text verse today, and then we'll get into uh, some other verses. So keep your Bibles nearby, because we're going to turn and look at several verses today. Um, I heard a guy say one time, a good old boy, um, a country guy with a little bit of a southern accent, you know, he said, I like my steak like I like my work. Well done. You know, he likes a job well done. And while I do like a job well done, I have to say that I personally like my steak about medium. So uh, I see where he's coming from and the fact that uh, a well done job, we like to do a job well done. And I guess for those of you, who like a well-done steak, and you get to chew and chew and chew and use floss later to get all that out, that's fine, but, uh, you know, we're talking about a job well done. We're in a series called 168, Honoring God with Every Hour, and today we're going to talk about committing our work unto the Lord, committing our work to the Lord, whatever kind of work that it is. You know, a Christian's work, if you're a believer in Jesus, your work, no matter what kind it is, should be characterized by putting forth our best effort. As a Christian, whatever we find ourselves involved in, we should put forth our best effort. The Bible says that whatever our hand finds to do, that we should do it with all of our might, okay? And... I think about work and, and what we call work, and, and we'll get into that in just a little bit, but we had our men's retreat this, this weekend, and a handful of us were able to get away and, and do some fishing and, and shoot some guns and things and have some food, and we had the annual fishing contest, and I would, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about it, um, and we had our annual, fi and, and we just love, I love to fish, I'm not very good at it, except for on this trip for some reason, um, and, uh, but I love the, the serenity of fishing, and, and we just had a good time spread around the pond there, talking to each other, making, busting each other's chops, laughing at each other a little bit for when you'd bring in a tiny one, and if somebody did happen to bring in a bigger fish, of course, you know, it was this big to them, but the rest of us saw it as maybe this big, and we had a great time, but fishing with all of our might. Now, a lot of things take time and effort and work, but for me, fishing, for whatever reason, at this pond, it just works. Um, I got down there, and I, I took my time putting my lure on. I was letting everybody catch up, and, uh, and, and I, I threw my, this is no joke. Now, sometimes I tell stories, but this is true, and the, the guys there, if they'll be honest, they'll verify this. Um, I threw my lure in, and as soon as it hit the water, I felt a tug. Now, most of us know if you've been fishing, that's usually not a good sign because it doesn't happen that fast. Usually that means you've snagged something. And I thought, no way. My first cast, I snagged. So I pull a little bit to try to see if I can get it off of whatever I've snagged. And 
it doesn't seem to be working. So I start reeling, and I'm getting the zzz, you know, and I'm like, oh, no. I get a little closer to shore, and sure enough, there's a fish on the line. And I brought this bluegill in, and it's, it's one of the biggest bluegill I've ever seen. Um, okay, that part I made up. It was a bluegill. It was all right. But I brought in, right off the bat, I started off well, hit a dry spell, wound up catching a, a really good-sized bass. Um, came in second only to the preacher who came to preach our messages, and um, I think Ed was just being nice to him. Um, and preacher, if you do watch this, I don't mean that. Uh, but for everybody else, I think Ed was being nice. Um, but my fish, I caught a good, and I caught a good-sized perch, too. And so we had a great time, and I love fishing. I, I did it with all my might, and the Lord blessed me. Um, we had a, a great time. Other guys caught some fish, too, but anyway, we won't talk about that. But doing anything with all of our might, working hard at whatever it is we do, okay? And as a Christian, all of our work, whatever kind it is, should be done with excellence. Now, hear us, hear us out on this. Just doing something, because this is something that we all battle with, don't we? Just doing something for the sake of doing it, because it should or needs to be done, listen carefully, is a way of telling God that the work he's given us to do doesn't matter that much. If we're just doing it because it's time to do it or we're supposed to do it and so we go through the motions, what we're really telling the Lord is this doesn't really matter that much. Doing things just to do them or because they've always been done or because this is just kind of my routine, it is, it, it, what it tells us is my heart has grown cold towards something. It's not getting my best effort. When we become familiar with things, we often lose touch with the, the excellence that we should do it with. And so as a Christian, we've got to constantly be checking ourselves to make sure that we're doing every, even if it's familiar, that we do it with all of our heart for the Lord. Now, I like task lists. I do. I, I live by one. I, I like how it shows your progress. <clears throat> it, I like how a task list will show that I'm getting things done or sometimes that I'm not because the check boxes are not filled. You know what I'm saying. But if check boxes, if just filling check boxes are my motivation and that, that filling in that box makes me feel good and feel like I'm getting something done, I can make up a whole bunch of dumb tasks to make myself feel good, right? Like uh, drive to work, check. Get out of car, check. You know, uh, go in building, check. Make coffee, check. Uh, turn on computer, check. Man, I've already gotten 10 or, thing, 10 or 12 things done this morning, you know? So if we're just check, checking boxes for the sake of saying, look at all that I've accomplished, you know, it's, it's really a, a moot point. So we have to be careful that the checking of boxes isn't, doesn't become our motivation. So we don't do what we're supposed to do and walk away saying, man, I did that, you know? Our motivation needs to be that we do it well for the Lord, doing a job well done. So everything we set out to accomplish through work should be done with God's glory as our motive. I mean, that's what the Word says. It really, I mean, the Bible says that everything that we set out to do should be done with God's glory as our motive. And I know that we're like, man, I do some pretty meaningless things. How could I do that with God's glory? And I would challenge us to think about what we call meaningless. Because everything that we accomplish can be done with God's glory in mind. It can. What kind of attitude do you have, friend, brother, sister? What kind of attitude do you have toward the different types of work that you do? Think about that. Is there a difference in the effort that you give different types of work? When it comes to your paid vocation, does that get more or less energy and effort than the other things, like your work around the house, or maybe your hobbies, or your relationships, or perhaps even when you serve the Lord at church? Do, do each of those get pro proper effort, or do we categorize, well, this one doesn't need as much, and this one's a little bit more important than that, and, and what we're going to see, I think, from the Word today is every bit of work that we do should be done with excellence. And that means we need to work hard all the time. 
which doesn't sit well with our flesh, does it? So this morning, we're going to see that one way that we can honor God with our hours is to commit all of our work to Him. So let's look at Proverbs chapter 16 together, and we're just going to read one verse to start. Proverbs 16, 3, okay? It says, commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Let's read that again, and maybe you'll read it out loud with me. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Let's pray together, and then we'll dive. We'll take a deep dive into the Word today and, and discuss this matter of honoring God with our work, committing our work to the Lord. So let's pause. And as we, as we talk to the Lord, each of us, whether you're a student, uh, an individual who has a career, or, or you work at a job, or, or even maybe you're retired, but there's other types of work that we're going to see that you're involved in. Let's all just pause before the Lord and say, Holy Spirit, would you open up my heart and my mind and my motives and reveal to me what's really there when it comes to my work? And show me, Lord, what you want me to see today. Let's pray that together, okay? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, the music that we've already heard that's, that's blessed our hearts. We were able to praise you this morning to sing of your everlasting arms. We can lean on you at any time, Lord. And, and in fact, we do need to lean on you at all times. Lord, we thank you for the promise of heaven. As, as the trio sang, Beulah Land. And we thought just for a little bit, for a few minutes, about how beautiful, how peaceful, how wonderful it will be to be with you forever, away from all the cares of this life. Thank you for the promise of heaven. And now, Lord, as we turn our attention to your word, I ask that your Holy Spirit and your Holy Word would work in my heart and the hearts of all of us who will consider this this morning. Lord, help me to... Uh, listen to your spirit and your word as they talk about my attitude towards work and the different kinds of work that I do. Lord, that you would correct some things that are wrong, encourage me where I'm right, and Lord, I pray that as, as we allow your word and your spirit to influence us today, that our work would become something that we do for your glory. And we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. So Proverbs 16.3, commit your works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. He's saying here, the writer of Proverbs says, commit to the Lord whatever you do. Whatever it is that you do, whatever that you find yourself doing, commit that to the Lord and he will establish your plans. When you commit something, when you commit to something, you are putting everything into it. We might use the phrase, we are all in. So when we commit all in, when we go all in on our work for the Lord, the Bible says God will be involved in it. When you say, all of my work is going to be for the glory of God, and you seek Him in that work, He will establish your, your plans. Listen, it doesn't mean that He'll confirm what we set out to do. Here's what it does mean it means he will establish or form our plans. When we partner with God in our work, when we seek his glory and we seek his wisdom and his input and his involvement in any work that we do, God will help us to form those plans. His way will become a part of what we do. It's, it's an influence that we, we look to the Lord for his influence in our work. And when that happens, friends, good things are going to happen. He's going to form our plans. He's going to help us get in, into the work. That, isn't that, we want the assistance of the Lord, don't we? We want him working with us. And I, th I feel like I need to say this because sometimes I know that I can see work as a bad thing. I remember a preacher one time, um, actually he was my youth director, he preached a message called, uh, work is not a four-letter word. Now think about that for a second, you know. And we were all like, dude, are, what's wrong with you? What he was saying is it's not a bad word. Work is a good thing. Work is good. How do we know that? Well, because God's a worker, isn't he? God is a worker. Think about creation. I mean, you, you can start at page one of the Bible and see God working, okay? He sustains 
everything in the universe. I mean, you and I worry about a lot of things, okay? And in, in the day and age we live in, there's a lot that we can worry about if we want to, okay? There's, a, there's plenty for you and I to fret over all of the time. How many of you this morning or this week had periods of anxiety over, is the world going to stop spinning? I didn't. Didn't really cross my mind this week. I never thought, what are we going to do if the earth stops spinning on its, on its axis? What's going to happen to me? Never gave it a thought. Now we're all worried about it. Thanks, right? Um, we don't think about things like that because we just, it's out of our control. I can't help if the earth spins on the axis, right? I mean, that's, I'm just on this planet. And we don't think about it because it's one of those things that's either going to happen or it's not, and it's going to happen, and we're just going to leave it up to God. Well, that would be a great attitude to take toward everything. And I'm saying all of that to get back to the point about work, that God sustains everything that he created in the universe. So he's a worker. And God is a worker in our sanctification. Aren't you glad for that? What does that mean? That's just a fancy word that says God's helping us be more like Jesus. Every day, God is working in us to make us more like Jesus. He works every day. Remember the old song as a kid, he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon, the stars, the sun, the earth, and Jupiter and Mars. A loving and patient he must be, he's still working on me. I mean, he is. It's sanctification. So work is not a bad thing because God works. Have you ever heard of this book uh, called Acts of the Apostles? Have you ever heard of that? The book of Acts the actual formal title of the book, we call it Acts, but the real formal title of the book is Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. When I was in Bible college at Luther Rice Seminary, I had a, had a professor, uh, Brother Skinner. He said, I don't think we should call it the Acts of the Apostles. We should call it the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Because truly what was happening was God was using people as instruments for his work to be done. And so the acts of the Holy Spirit. See, the Bible's full of ways to tell us that God works. Let's go to Mark 16. Mark 16, 20. This is a great verse. It's right at the end of the, the book of Mark. <clears throat> and Jesus has risen from the dead. He's ascended. And Mark 16, 20, last verse in the book of Mark says, And they, the disciples, went forth, and preached everywhere. I love these words. The Lord working with them. How did he do that? Confirming the word with signs following. Amen. So the disciples went everywhere preaching the word. And how did God validate their preaching? With signs. Because the word of God wasn't complete yet. And it wasn't established yet. And so God was using signs and miracles through this group of men to accomplish the confirmation of his word. But I love the fact that it says the Lord was working with them. And do you know, friend, that when you and I serve the Lord in any kind of work, he's working with us. Now that, that, that removes all the excuses that you and I have for things not being done well or for us not giving our best effort. I mean, think about this. If I say it was going to come up to the church, and we had a big event up here, and it was just a mess, and I was going to come up and clean up. And I came up here, and I just was tired, and it got a little bit lazy. I started cutting some corners, and I, I had some things to move, and Jesus came and said, let me help you move this. Do you think that would change the way I was working? <laughs> I think if the Lord said, let me grab the other side of this table, I would want to do my part. I wouldn't want to say, you know, Lord, just take it from here. You know, Jesus, take the wheel, whatever. You know, I mean, we, we, we want, if the Lord was there working with us, man, that would energize me, wouldn't it? I would be energized to know Jesus says, look, I'm going to go with you as you go out and tell people about me. Man, that would put a hop in my step. Or if I was getting up to preach or to sing or to, to greet or to whatever it is that we do, and I'm mentioning by the way, church ministry, I'm talking about any work that we do. If Jesus says, I'm going to be with you and we're going to work together at this, man, that would energize me. I would be excited to see what would happen then. The fact of the matter is, friend, he does. He does work with us. He says so in his word. 
And then I love this, and you love this verse too. Let's go uh, to Matthew 11. You love these verses. Matthew chapter 11. And I've heard people take these out of context. I'm being funny, you know. They, they, they use this as a reason to be lazy. And, and, um, but don't you love when Jesus just says this to people? I mean, he, he's looking at people. He sees them as sheep without his shepherd. He just, he just gets done, like, upbraiding or severely uh, scolding these cities who had rejected his word and they wouldn't repent. And then Jesus says these words in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek or gentle and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, I want to, Jesus does not say, come to me and you won't have to work. If you read those three verses, Jesus never promises that that you'll not have to work. He says, if you come, though, with me, if you come to me and find your rest, if you do your work with me, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, if you're a person that likes to do Bible study, a really cool thing, maybe you like to write in your Bible, if you look at these three verses, in verse 28, circle the word labor, And then draw a line to the word yoke, down in verse 30. And then go back up to verse 28 and circle the words heavy laden. And draw a line to the verse, or to the word burden, in verse 30. So connect labor and yoke, and the words heavy laden with burden. So Jesus says, those of you who labor and are just heavy laden, you're carrying a a load that you can barely go with. He says, when you come to me, look what I'll do. Look at verse 30. I will take your yoke, your labor, and it'll be easy. And I will take your heavy laden, your burden, and I'll make it light. When we work with the Lord, see, he loves to work with his people. And this is a promise from the word. Jesus said, you come to me, and this is what will happen. What a promise. God delights to work with us. God created everything, didn't he? And he asked Adam to help him. He said, Adam, I've created all this, but now I want you to do a couple things. I want you to tend the garden, and I even want you, I'm going to let you name the animals. Do you remember what God did name? The Bible says that God has a name for every star. God named the stars. God called this that he called this that he called this he called this he called this but God stopped and said I'm gonna let Adam partner with me and I'm gonna let him take care of the garden now that I've created it and I'm even gonna let him name the animals because God delights to work with us if you look at Genesis 2 15 it's on our screen here it says and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress or work it and to keep it God said, I'm going to create it all. I'm going to start it all growing because that's something beyond what you can do. But I'm going to ask you to take care of it and to tend it. God could have said, I'll take care of it naturally. I'll prune things. I'll harvest things. All you have to do is sit there and it'll start just rolling into you. But he didn't do that. He said, I want you to join me in work. See, it's not a bad thing. By the way, that was before the fall. Because we say, see, work is a curse of the fall. No. The sweat of work, the, the, the di- difficulty, the problems that come with work, that's a, pr- a, a curse of the, uh, of the fall. But this all, God working with Adam, that came before the fall. See, God does want to work with us. And then a verse that we all know, we could probably all quote it, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. When I said at the outset that God wants all of our work, no matter what kind it is to be to his glory, this is the indicator. This is the banner of scripture that says, you know, a catch-all. No matter what it is that you're doing, just do it for the glory of God. And if he says eating and drinking, 
then he, he, of course, he means our work. Do it all to the glory of God. So this morning, I want to look at three categories, briefly. Three categories of work. All of them are important to the Lord, and therefore, they should be important to us. All of these, hear this carefully, because some of you are going to be confused if you don't listen at this point, okay? All of the things, the three categories that we're going to mention, each one of them, hear this, are ministry. You're going to notice that I didn't make ministry a category. I set out to do that at the beginning, but the more I studied, the more God said no. Ministry is not a category of work. Ministry is involved in every part of work. Because we're not here just to do our God thing when we're at church and then go out and do um, our other kind of work. No, 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 no. We are to be salt and light wherever we go. So that means any work that we do is ministry. Not just what we do when we are at church is ministry. Doing those particular tasks that we do in and around the church grounds, that's not the only ministry we do. Everything else we do is ministry. Clearly, when we serve the Lord's people in what we call church work, we call that ministry, that's important. I'm not denying that. We are carrying out our part in the body of Christ. By the way, let's pause here and ask you, brother, sister, I'm serious. What is your part in the body of Christ? What is your work in the body of Christ? We're all a part of the body to to, to function to make it work. How are you functioning? Okay? Here are three ways, though, we, we often view work. And here's what I hope the Holy Spirit will do for us today. I hope he'll show us that all work can and should be for the Lord. First category, number one, vocational work or how we make a living, okay? That's the first category we're going to explore, vocational work or how we make a living. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, think about your job. Think about um, young people, This, this would be school for you. Learning is your job, okay? What you learn at school, that is your work. For those of us who have jobs or careers, let's see what God says about our vocational work or how we make a living. Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to read verses 5 through 8. He says, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, or here on this earth, with fear and trembling, in singleness or sincerity of your heart, As unto Christ, not with eye service, meaning only when the boss is looking, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Man, I hope, I hope you take some time this week because we can't do it justice in the time we have this morning. If, you're a, if you have a career or a job or you're a student, I hope we all will take some time this week to tear down this passage and let it, let it grip us. And we're going to do a little bit of it right now. Okay, so it's talking about servants and masters. We might say today, employees and bosses, okay? So verse 5, servants, employees, be obedient to them that are your bosses, masters, according to the flesh here on this earth. How are we supposed to be obedient to them? With fear and trembling, sincerely, from sincere hearts. Now, here's a phrase we need to, to really focus on, underline, highlight, whatever. As unto Christ. Our vocational work, our vocational work should be done as unto Christ with sincere effort. Are we doing that in our vocational work? Verse 6, not with eye service. That's a, that's a, a word that obviously if you break that down, you, you see that it's when the boss is paying attention. Not only when the boss is watching. Work hard at your vocation 
un, as unto Christ, and not only when the boss is watching. Isn't that the easiest time to kind of slack? Maybe the boss is on vacation, or he's in his office, or he's somewhere else in the plant, or he's not around, and so you know I can just kind of hang out. But we're instructed here, don't only work as unto Christ when he's watching as men pleasers. Wow, think about what he just said there. Your vocational work is not just to please your boss or to impress the people around you. Your vocational work is unto the Lord as a servant, verse 6, of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Folks, the first two verses we've read have the word heart in it. He's talking about vocational work. I know we're supposed to put our heart into ministry, but he says put it into your vocational work too. Verse 7, with goodwill, doing service as to the Lord. There it is again and not to men. Verse 8, knowing. So here's the, here's the response. Here's what's going to happen. That whatsoever good thing a man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. <clears throat> In other words, God is watching and rewarding in ways that you cannot earn from men. If we do our work, our vocational work, as unto the Lord, with our hearts, God will reward us in ways that even our boss can't reward us. <clears throat> Why is it important to work that way in vocational work? Because that's part of our testimony. <clears throat> you know, I, I'll say it like this. A sorry worker who is a Christian is a poor testimony you don't work hard at your vocation, you're a poor testimony. Now, your, your work in vocation, that isn't going to lead somebody to, someone to Christ, but you know what it'll do? It'll build up a testimony that when you do have an opportunity to share Christ with them, they're going to see it's coming from a sincere person who doesn't do, uh, you know, does what they say, what they believe all the time. It's important for our vocational work to be seen as ministry. We have an opportunity to be a good testimony for Christ and to influence others as we work hard at our vocation. It is ministry. Second type of work let's look at this morning is domestic work or work in and for the home. Um, not everyone goes out to a job every day. Some work at home. Stay-at-home moms, stay-at-home family members who take care of the home. And even those who do go out to work, when we come home, there are things we need to take care of at home. So it's a part of work. It's included in our, our work time in our week. Let's go to Proverbs 24. This is a cool verse that uh, I was introduced to me by a a friend of mine who used this as his motivation for when getting his degree and his job before he got married so he'd have a way to make a living to support his wife. Proverbs 24, 27 says, Prepare thy work without and make it fit for thyself in the field and afterward build thine house. So what's the point here? The point is, the priority of working for a living, but that domestic work is honorable and necessary and should not be done with any less effort. Here's what I want to say to a bunch of people in this world who are in a younger generation. Please listen carefully. All of us listen to this, but especially our younger people. Get out and get a job. And that's not, that does, the Bible doesn't say it like I just said it. But work, work. You can't have a house to build if you don't have money to build it with. And let me just say this. Quit relying on mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and aunts and uncles and friends to build your house for you. If you're able to work, work. And then take care of your house. 
We're so busy making sure that all of the stuff around us is, is perfect and well done and we, we have all the things that we want because we're living off somebody else's coin. That's not how it works. The proverb says, you go out and work in the field, make, make a living, and then take care of all that other stuff. There is a priority there. So let, let's remember, working is, is important. The, the Bible even says, this doesn't sit well with us, if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. It didn't say can't work, it said don't work. And let me just say this, there's a lot of work that people can do that they say they can't. And I'm just going to leave it at that before I get on the soapbox. All right. But let me say this. All work is sacred. Did you hear that? All work is sacred. One man said it like this. Now listen to this carefully. When we say there is secular work and then there is sacred work, what we're really saying is some things are really important to God and other things are not. And again, we go back to our testimony. It's important. Even the work we do in and around our home is important. And the Holy Spirit just wanted me to say this too. Gentlemen, if your wife stays home and keeps the home for you, and you go out and you come home, you better understand that she's working hard, and you better treat her as a half of a whole. That's what I was supposed to say. All right. And this goes back to the doing all to the glory of God. Okay, the third kind of work, and finally, we're going to finish up with this. The third kind of work is interpersonal work. Interpersonal work or relationships. If you have them, you know they take work. And if you don't have them, that's probably why you don't. Because you're not willing to work at them. Okay? Okay. Proverbs 27, 17. We all know this one, don't we? Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance or the face of his friend. Brothers and sisters, do you want to know why your face is the way that it is? And I don't mean your... The reason your face that tells who you are and what you're up to or not up to, you want to know why it is the way it is? Because you're either being dulled by this world or sharpened by God and his people. I hope this is, I hope this is, the Lord is using this land in our hearts today. Listen, the friction, as, as you read that iron sharpens iron, the friction of two blades is work. There's spark, there's, there's shards of metal, there's a clanging, there's, things are happening, that friction is work. It's striking one another. Now listen to this. When the work is being done with God's glory as its end, the blade becomes sharper. When work is being done, listen, with my glory as its end, my blade becomes dull. Because if it's all about me, I will be miserable. And relationships take work. Quit running from the work of relationships. You need them. You need more than the person on the phone that, that tries to give you input that you're paying for. You need people in your life who love the Lord Jesus Christ, who will tell you what you need to hear, and whose iron will sharpen you, not make you dull. And you know what? Sometimes when that that metal strikes one another, it's striking. It doesn't always feel great. But we need it. Hear this. When we refuse to work at sharpening others, listen, we are refusing to bless another and become better ourselves. It takes work, effort, time to learn to get the blades at the proper angle. And you have to be together in order to sharpen someone. Two pieces of iron that never touch cannot sharpen one another. It's safer just to leave me be. I don't want to be told I'm wrong. 
I don't want to be told that maybe I don't have this thing right or that I, I need to do something differently or I'm not seeing something proper or that I have a blind spot. I don't like that. I don't like it when people sit across the table from me and say, I just disagree. Or, I think that might be wrong. Or I think you're seeing this in a way that's not right. That's not pleasant, but man, is it necessary. We need that. And if I just set myself on the counter, if you take a knife and use it and use it and use it, it's going to become dull and dull and dull until you sharpen it. But if you just set it there, it's never going to get sharpened. You have to actually get the tool and get it sharpened. And you and I, we are meant to be, we were made to be a tool used in, in God's hands. So take the risk, make the effort, and sharpen someone else as they sharpen you. Because we weren't made to lay on the counter and not be used. Every relationship we have, husbands, wives, every relationship we have should have this kind of effort and care. Especially husbands and wives. Children and parents. Grandchildren and grandparents. Friends, co-workers, classmates, teammates. And your social media too. How do you use that? Is your social media all about you? Or are you sharpening others with it? Now I know that your, your dances and your face, that sharpens other people all the time. I understand that. But are you using all that you have been given by God to help and bless others? And let good godly people bless and help you. So today as we close, we're going to invite our musician to come. And I just want to ask this question again that we ask at the outset. What kind of attitude do you have toward the different work that you do? Because all of it is ministry. All of it. Vocational, domestic, interpersonal. It's all ministry. How do we treat it? Do we do it for the glory of God? How has the Holy Spirit spoken to us this morning? As you consider your work, whatever type, have you ever considered that it's ministry? Have you ever considered that God put you in that job, listen, in that particular seat or that cubicle or that truck or wherever it is that you find yourself in your, did you ever consider that God placed you there because he has a job, a ministry for you to do with those around you? All work is ministry. It all is an opportunity to bring glory to God. Do we see it that way? Let me ask you, how about your service to the Lord while you're at church? That kind of work. Are you using what he's given you to bless and help others? How has he spoken to your heart this morning? Just bow your head wherever you're at. and Consider, ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, what did you want me to hear? I have a feeling if you're like me, he's already pointed some things out. He's already showed me <laughs> some areas that I need to commit to him and my work, all types of it. Talk to him about it. Consider the idea. Isn't this awesome? Consider the idea that God is working with you. He delights in that. Don't forget, he asked Adam to keep the, keep the garden and name the animals because he wanted to partner with him. And God wants you to partner with him the work that he's given you. So would you do that? Consider the fact that all that you do, he will work with you. Don't ignore him. Include him in on it. Do it for his glory. Let that energize you as you go into the office tomorrow or as you go into the classroom or as you go into your van or your truck or the warehouse, the store, wherever it is that you find yourself working it for the glory of God. We'll pray and we'll be finished this morning.
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together that we've had to to meet even even online, Lord, to, to sing and to consider your word this morning. Now, Lord, I pray that you would take the music and the and the words from the Bible today and and the teaching of the Holy Spirit to each individual heart, that we would consider what you have said and let it propel us to do all that we do for your glory, to be mindful of our home in heaven, and to praise you even when we find ourselves in situations that we would not desire. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching today. If you want to reach out to us, do so online here. But Lord willing, you'll be with us next week in Revival, here in the building, Lord willing, and all the services will be live streamed. So if you cannot be here, it'll all be available that way. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you next week. Thank you.